The last video about what we can learn from Xantaris was liked by a lot of you. So here we go again. Tips and tricks, this time from myself. Five matches, five clutches on Dust2, Mirage, Inferno and two times Train happened. And I'll try to break those down for you. I'll give it my best shot to explain my thinking process behind movement, utility usage and so forth when I'm in a clutch situation. I hope you can learn a thing or two from this. Let me know what you think. Enjoy. Oh, and regarding the title, love you. <laughs> this video is sponsored by WD Black. I'm incredibly excited to announce that I've teamed up with Western Digital. Having used their products for a few years now, this just fits perfectly. Playing daily CSGO and editing my videos almost on a daily basis to anything but the best will waste time, effort and ultimately be damaging to my content. After all, I'd say I need the best equipment at this point to stay in the game. The new SN850 NVMe SSD from WD Black will be a game changer for me. It has irrational read, which makes the gameplay just perfect. Incredible performance is guaranteed. Overall, it's just a 1010 experience thus far. It's reliable, everything is super smooth, and it's great to have a product that just lets you experience gaming without any worries at all. Two thumbs up for sure. And it has custom RGB too. You can never get enough of RGB, can you? Go check out the WD Black store in the description. Thank you. The first clip we're on Inferno. It's a one versus five situation. Now, generally, I would say a one versus five is impossible to win unless the enemy is giving you chances, unless the enemy is actually doing a couple of mistakes by overpeaking or just by feeling too confident. How often did you end up in a clutch situation where the enemy is just like running in like an idiot, thinking the round is already over, but then you make it competitive. This is exactly what happens in this round. Now, what do we know? The bomb is down top middle, one guy on long, one guy on short close. You don't have to take the chance and run out and get an instant kill. You could also go back, wait for an enemy to make an obvious mistake and run into your crosser and then play off of the one versus four. However, if that is the case, if that is what you're playing, you're gonna take like five to 10 seconds until somebody pushes you. And in that time frame, the given information could have already faded. What I mean by that is that the enemies that were known could have been behind the corner already. They could have backed down. They could have pushed you at the same second as well. They could have snuck up and so forth. So I want to make sure that I get a quick trade kill and then work off of the information that is being given to me afterwards. Get the one versus five to one versus four. And that is exactly what happens. Now we have a one versus four situation on our hand. The one information that is known is that there's one player on long that could be close or at the corner. Now what you have to assume as well is that there's four people on A already because of the noise and because of everything that happened early in the round, as well as no pressure on the B bomb side banana. You need to be ready for four players on your side of the map. Now, I can't be sure that the third guy is staying in pit or around balcony where usually a guy is anchoring. Therefore, I use my flashbang to keep the long player at bay, peek out a boiler really quickly to see if the Yaps player pushed towards short up to get the easy trade frag and boiler. He is not there. And at that second, something happens. The guy in apps has an unlucky timing that I run down the stairs and actually misses that one bullet, which gives away his position. Now we know where two people are. It's quite obvious that the guy in apps who with the shot on me running down the boiler stairs is the next target. So I need to kill him and then I need to make sure the long player falls. After I'm getting the kill, the long player is reloading close in the corner. Another sound cue, which I should quickly convert. Now here's where the thinking actually begins. The time frame where all of this happened was 20 seconds. Within 20 seconds, both of the B players should have been already rotated towards the A bomb site. One of them could have also pushed middle behind you from banana. The other one could have even made the jump towards quad or apps and flank you wide as well, just like the second player tried to attempt. Now, what is the most likely scenario? That there's one guy either pushed on banana and one guy is sitting around on long trying to hold boiler as well, which is why I'm deciding to do the following. I decide to avoid the angle on long where a guy could potentially or most likely actually hold me as well as avoid the mid player pushing me just straight up go through balcony. And as soon as I see the smoke on long, I take my chances to go into pit 
Now I'm careful. If anybody was close middle, they could have given the information across of where I roughly am. So I'm just not making any sound cues anymore. I carefully hold long, check the corners, check quad, check apps, and just wait. I do have around 40 seconds left on clock. There is no need to panic. So the enemy has a rough guess where you're at, but not really actually. Now with 30 seconds left on the clock, I decide to go ahead and search long. I'm trying to search for the one kill, isolate the player and go for the one versus one in the end. By now, you know that nobody pushed up on the bomb site, nobody's in pit slash graveyard or nobody's on short because I didn't push up yet. Potentially he's in apps, which is unlikely due to the timing. And let's be real here. Who's going to clear apps without any sound cues before clearing short? So the highly likely outcome is that there's still someone around long. Now there's already been around 30 seconds crossed again, which means the second player has to worry about B as well. And right when I go up on long, I hear the sound cues of the enemy. It's 28 seconds left on the clock and the enemy just gives away the sound cue, which is, yeah, rather the easiest one versus one of my life that I'm going to get. I, of course, decide to take it instantly, realizing the way that he's running towards the bomb site that there needs to be another player that is currently holding B, is still on B, or he went back banana if he pushed middle towards B. The kill from the one guy running towards A happened and therefore I can be 100% sure that the other guy is worrying about B at this very moment. I am able to take my time with the plant. I am able to take any position I want. Don't overcommit. I do not need to look for the kill. It's a one versus one. The bomb is planted. The enemy has to defuse it. Therefore, the enemy has to search for me first. Playing the time, playing the objective instead of playing the kill. The enemy does give a sound cue by shooting with the AWP on long. For me, that's just a clear indicator. That's just a bait for me to peek. I do not take that bait. I'm just going to stay clear and patient in pit and wait for him to push up. His position is known. He has to walk on the bomb site, clear all the angles with an AWP. It's impossible for him to win the round unless I do give him a fight and he hits some shot on me. I'm waiting a couple of seconds, which feel right to me that he probably unscoped or is running out on long or is walking on the bomb site. And after those couple of seconds of waiting time, I I commit to the peak, get the kill. Let's just say it wasn't the craziest one versus five in the world, but yeah. The next clip we're looking at was a mirage. It's a four versus three situation. What we know in this situation is that there is one guy around jungle slash window area because he was getting a kill around 10 seconds earlier, as well as that I was fighting the B guy means there was one guy stuck on B as always. The fight resulting in usually the short player still sticking around on short slash is going back to the B bomb site to assist his teammate. Short is smoked, therefore we decide to go up connector. You peek the bomb site, you peek the usual angles, you see if somebody's peeking from the A bomb site to try and get a kill on him. Nobody's peeking from the bomb site, therefore we just creep up, checking jungle, checking window, the usual angles where that one guy who was spotted earlier could reside. Nobody's peeking in jungle or window, therefore we already make our way onto the A bomb site, trying to clear all the angles. And at that exact second, one guy shooting from ticket. Since I'm up on stairs, I can either decide to take the fight, which let's be real here for a second, I'm at a high disadvantage, or I back down and we reset the situation, but we gain information as well as the CTs though. They have gained information as well. At this point in time, they know we are going to the A bomb site so we can let go of shift and do the runnings.
No, everything that is happening in the split seconds are just the sound cues. The flashbang that is being thrown from CT spawn indicates that he's still close. CT most likely backing down because in a 4 versus 3 situation, he wants to keep the man advantage. I shortly jiggle peek towards Ticket. He could have faked a couple of sound cues and just stood a Ticket to take the fight, which is not the case. I ask for a flashbang to peek CT spawn in case he's close to the wall or still peeks so I could get the kill instantly. It doesn't happen like that though. I'm still very careful, jiggle peeking a little bit so I'm able to fall back in case some guy is trying to instantly fight me. The enemy is sort of not doing a big mistake by running in there with two people. However, my teammate and me were prepared for that and we just get a couple of nice kills. My teammate is committing to a full fight for CT spawn, which I really didn't want to do, so I backed down towards the bomb site, resetting the situation based off of the information. Because of us fighting for 10 seconds on the A bomb site, it is highly unlikely that there's somebody already in ramp or that there was somebody waiting in palace. So that means that the last two players are coming from the B bomb site, either CT spawn, jungle, or connector. My teammate instantly gets traded from CT spawn and calls out there's two CT spawn. So now the four versus three situation went into two versus two with the information being on our side. We know that they're both deep into CT spawn, not close to the bomb site. We can plant the bomb, play the two versus two after plant. I use the timing to go into Palace. I call that my teammate should go towards Tetris slash towards Ramp so we can build up a 180 degree setup. What I mean by 180 degree setup is that we're both into such an angle that an enemy would have to flick 180 degrees to kill ourselves. The wider the gap between the teammates as a T, the better. How unlikely is it for an enemy to get a 180 degree transfer if he fights one person and the other one peaks at the same time, yada, yada, yada. If we're both on the same spot, it is rather easy to kill. If we're both not on the same spot, as in the degree window is really widened up, it is incredibly hard for the enemy to hit two kills at the same time. Now I see that my teammate in Tetris is rather aggressive, picking an angle where he's gonna take the fight. So I do walk close palace to either get a cheeky kill while he's fighting or to get a peek straight afterwards. The enemy after clearing the bomb site should be aware that I'm either in ramp or in palace. But since the bomb is planted on default, I will most likely not be in ramp. I will be somewhere close to the bomb site or in palace. So if I'm in ramp, I lose the round anyway. That doesn't matter. If I'm in palace in a two versus one situation, one guy is going to hold me while the other guy is going to defuse, which is also a very likely situation for the CTs to win. So I decide to take the fight. I do not get the kill because I'm whiffing a little bit. However, I instantly go to take a little bit of a different aggressive angle. I need to get one early kill. As soon as man of one versus one, I can play the bomb. I can jiggle peek. I can do anything I want to outplay the CT player. But I need to get that one versus one in this situation. The enemy taps the bomb, I make a couple of sound cues, I shoot against the wall just to get him off of the defuse, which also happens. If you have a bomb plant like that on default, and if you're in palace, just don't commit to a full fight. Remember guys, it takes 5 seconds or even 10 to defuse the bomb, so you don't have to commit fully. All you need to do is get him off the defuse and make sure you win the round. The objective is bomb defuser. Well, that was it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe with the bell so you will be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you.